where we would have brought our sheep to this spring on either the Badger Springs or the 30 Mile Spring allotment basically got overgrazed by wild horses all winter. And with zero moisture to help it grow back this spring, we had no place to take our sheep for the spring and the early summer. That was the deciding factor on selling the herd of sheep that had put this ranch in business so many years ago. I believe he sold 1,800 mother ewes and plus the yearlings. They had an emergency gather here this year in the antelope complex because the horses were starving to death because they'd eat themselves out of house and home. I had to bring the cattle in. Look at these haystacks. If you've got an area that you've got 2,000 horses over what should be on that area and there's one water hole that's being shared by every other form of wildlife, what's gonna take over? Fifty years ago when we, if we had a 6,000 acre, 5,000 acre fire, everybody thought that was a big fire. Then they went to the 20 and 30,000 acre fires and thought that was a big fire. Now, when you look at this whole northern end of, of Nevada and Oregon and Idaho, which are next to us, we have 400,000 acre fires right next door to one another. Look at the fuel. It's everywhere. And unless they let us start grazing more cattle or doing something different, it'll be another fire the next year. There's just, it like it doesn't go away. In this part of Nevada, on our ranch, it takes approximately 100 acres to run a cow. So it takes quite a bit of country because of the lack of precipitation that we get. When you figure that Nevada's about 85, 90% public lands, we depend on those lands. We can't do it all in private. The challenges that we face right now are an increased cost from environmental pressure. That is our number one fear of being able to pass this ranch on from one generation to the other. One of the things that's really heavily focused on at range camp is just making sure you take a step back and look at, okay, how is this affecting everything else? How are we doing this right? How are we maybe doing this wrong? What can we change? Um, and I think that really puts a lot of those issues in perspective. We have kids that come here not caring anything about resource management or the country and the state they live in, and they go away knowing a basic of resource management. And that educated public, whether it's a high school kid or what, makes a lot of difference when you go and try and do management on public lands.